When it's as dry as the Sahara and you want it to be moist, all you need is the right kind of energy and you can make it rain. And that is a weird science fact that boggles my mind. The Sahara Desert is the largest hot desert in the world. Yeah, she is. And the 5.6 million square mile desert only gets about three inches of rain per year. And despite what Donnie would tell you, that's not very much. As a result, despite all of the sun, not a lot lives there and not a lot can grow. And as the planet's temperature continues to rise, the desert only gets hotter and drier every year. Now the Sahara is located in North Africa. And the surrounding geographic areas of Africa, the Middle East, parts of Europe, and Asia are huge energy markets. Many of those areas are severely underserved and have little or no access to reliable energy. Other areas have to rely on energy from problematic trade partners like Russia. And much of their energy comes from burning fossil fuels, which is obviously problematic. So when researchers recently did a study on the effects of a massive solar and wind installation in the Sahara Desert, you would assume their primary focus was to address those needs. But it wasn't. It was to study its effects on the weather. And of course you're probably thinking, oh well duh, climate change. Also, no, not, not exactly. The study was done to see if wind and solar could get Sahara wet. And according to the results, it could. Apparently installing wind and solar in the Sahara would quite literally make it go green. See, wind turbines disrupt the flow of fast moving winds across the desert and it brings warmer air down lower closer to the surface. That warm air close to the surface then rises as warm air does and that causes evaporation. That evaporation causes the air to cool and can dense, that condensation causes precipitation or rain. And solar does the same thing in a different way. Solar panels close to the ground absorb solar radiation and that causes heat. That warms up that localized ground area by a degree or two, once again causing the same evaporation, condensation, precipitation thing. That increased precipitation obviously causes a little bit more rain. And despite what the Marines may think, it is actually rain that makes the grass grow. Then where there used to be desert, where the wind could whip by unimpeded, the green grass grows causing a rough surface. This creates high and low pressure pockets along the surface that once again causes the evaporation, condensation, precipitation cycle. And with enough solar, wind, and plant life, it is estimated that the rainfall would double in the Sahara. This would create more arable land in a place where there isn't much, and that would help with food scarcity problems in the region. This would also obviously help with water scarcity issues in the area, of which there is a lot, and that results in a lot of conflict and a lot of death and suffering in the region. Plant life sequesters carbon, which would help with climate change and air quality, and obviously as a side effect that's not not such an aside, this would offset some of the dirty energy demand in the region. So how much energy exactly would an installation this size produce? It would offset four times more energy than the current demand of the entire world. Obviously, there'd be some distribution and geopolitical obstacles, but yeah, we could power the entire world four times over with a solar installation in the Sahara. And that is crazy. This could be nearly a silver bullet solution to countless humanitarian and environmental problems. But obviously, there's obstacles. The region isn't exactly what we would call stable, largely because of those environmental and humanitarian issues. And 10 countries' borders run through the Sahara. You can't get 10 people to agree on dinner. Try to get 10 countries to agree on a project like this. On top of that, most of those countries don't have the kind of resources to fund a project like this, so this would require international cooperation on funding. We need to consider how altering the climate and the amount of rainfall in the Sahara will alter rainfall and climate conditions in other parts of the world. Although most models have shown that globally it would be negligible or a net positive. Still a very big thing, like a global thing with a lot of factors that uh, need to be fully understood before moving forward. And while all of that may be true, the fact that solar in the Sahara should send spats of showers solving so many many of civilization setbacks, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.